I am Dr. Tejas Rao, Consultant Physician at Pristine Hospital, Bangalore. I will be talking today about Dengue Fever. Dengue Fever is an arboviral infection transmitted by Aedes aegypti mosquito. Arboviral in the sense that it is a viral infection transmitted by mosquitoes. Now coming to the symptoms of Dengue Fever. A patient usually of Dengue Fever presents with high grade fever, usually more than 102, 103 degree Fahrenheit with headache, severe joint pain, severe body pain vomiting sensation, diarrhea, rashes. So these are the presenting features of dengue fever. Whenever a patient has fever more than 101 or 102 degree Fahrenheit with severe back pain with or without rashes, we usually suspect dengue fever bar a viral fever and he has to be evaluated in a hospital. Then we will discuss about the diagnosis of dengue fever. The diagnosis of dengue fever basically we do two tests. One is called NS1 antigen which is positive up to the third or fourth day of illness. Next is the IgM ELISA, Dengue IgM ELISA which we do after the fourth day of illness up to the eighth day or ninth day it becomes positive. Later when there is the antibody production in the body we do the IgG antibodies which may be positive after 10 day of illness. So these are the diagnostic tests. Along with this we usually do a test called PCV which translates into packed cell volume. This is a very useful test to find out if the patient is stable hemodynamically or he is going in for a shock. One of the most important complications of a dengue illness is dengue hemorrhagic shock syndrome where the patient will be bleeding like hell and he will also be going for hypotension and shock. So this is a very grave serious illness which has to be stringently managed in a very good setup in a hospital which is able to manage this kind of a condition which is having a very good ICU. So here we keep monitoring the Paxel volume of the patient. If it is less than 40, it is good. If it is more than 40, we will have to give him lot of fluids so that his PCV is brought down to less than 40 and we will have to keep monitoring it. Apart from this, we do basic investigations like liver uh, function tests which may be deranged in the initial stages. Along with this, we will also have to look into the kidney parameters on and off. We do an ultrasound scan which usually reveals a distended gallbladder. Sometimes may be filled with stones or sometimes there may not be any stones but usually a gallbladder which is distended with mild ascites is the usual picture. So the patient may also complain of severe abdominal pain, abdominal discomfort in the initial stages up to 5th to 6th day which is usually common but usually self sufficient and it goes away on its own. You do not have to do anything regarding that. Coming to the treatment, more of a symptomatic treatment. You will have to give IV fluids, you should ask the patient to take plenty of fluids. He has to drink at least 4 to 5 liters of water fluids per day and he has to cut down on the caffeine intake because that causes dehydration. Food wise he can take anything as long as he tolerates that. We give a lot of IV fluids for this condition usually to the tune of 300 to 350 ml per hour which is very important. IV antibiotics have absolutely no role unless the patient is suffering from a secondary bacterial infection. Apart from this we also give the patient platelets only if the platelet count is less than 20,000 or if the patient is in dengue shock syndrome or hemorrhagic shock only in these conditions we will have to give him platelets otherwise platelets are definitely not required but anyway the doctor will definitely look into the platelet count morning and evening twice a day depending upon the requirement and if the platelets are required definitely the transfusions will be made and here I would like to stress that patients are usually worried that dengue fever means you will have to give him platelets this is not true. Only if the platelets are less than 20,000 or patient is bleeding will have to give platelets otherwise strictly it is not required. All of us follow the WHO guidelines and we transfuse platelets only when it is required and should not be transfused unjudiciously. Apart from this some people do give steroids it has a equivocal role. Some people give steroids because it reduces the platelet destruction in the peripheries. So we do give steroids sometimes when the platelets are very low. Apart from this we also look into the hydration of the patient which I already discussed. The non-medical aspects of treatment include the papaya leaf which extracts which are commercially available as tablets which can be given and also the kiwi fruits which do increase the platelet count to some extent. And as far as the precautions is concerned definitely you have to use a mosquito net at home, use a good mosquito repellent or you can apply odomas or something to protect yourself from mosquitoes. Apart from this we will also keep in mind that dengue viral illness is not the only viral illness which is present nowadays. We have a lot of other viruses, nearly 200 viruses which can mimic dengue illness. All these things can reduce the platelets and can mimic a dengue viral illness. So it's very important for you to go to a good physician and follow up stringently. These other differential diagnosis of dengue illness includes wheel felix uh, disease. Okay, This is also called as uh, rickets hill disease which we will have to investigate and see where the rashes come early, earlier than the dengue. 
And apart from this, we'll also, of course, typhoid will have to rule out, we'll also rule out other conditions like other viruses, which are also very important. So mostly the take home message from this talk, what I'm giving you is viral illness is not very difficult to manage unless the patient develops any complications. Secondly, if a patient has severe joint pain, severe body pain, and uh, high grade fever of more, more than 101, it's better to come to the hospital immediately and take advice and not to stay at home and delay the treatment. So this is what I'd like to say. So any further information you require, please come to Christian Hospital and contact me for any further information. Thank you.